Hello everyone, Archbishop Eric Logan here. I've got a message for you. It's a bit of a reminder that I'm hoping will save your life, save your soul, at the very least, hand in hand with the rest, save some face, save you some embarrassment in the future. This is a reminder that has been passed down from the Lord's Imperial Regent in the VK Congregation of Rael. I suggest you all join us there. If you haven't heard from him yet, you should. You'll benefit from it. So I'm going to be reading a post that he's made there throughout much of this, and I will also add in to help clarify these points, because I don't want any of this to slip by you. Many of the Lord's chosen have already fallen. We are in Revelation 13.7, so expect it to get worse. Revelation 13.7 says, Then the beast was permitted to wage war against the saints and conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, every people, and tongue, and nation. This is the time Satan has been given authority to conquer the saints. So nobody can be complacent now. Nobody can think that everything will be alright. Because that is how Satan gets you to lower your guard. We have watched Satan use the heart's desire to cause the chosen to fall. There's a litany of excuses, and I've heard them all by now. But it never seems to end. The next don't seem to learn from the lessons of the past because they make up their own new excuses, their own new reasons to fall. Here's a few of them. I've worked on this project or career for years. I can't give it up for him. Right now, I need money more than I need to serve him. That's a classic. I want you to keep in mind as you go, as I read through these, these aren't really, when you say it out loud, they sound silly, don't they? But these are the things we say to ourselves in our minds and in our hearts day after day as we fail our Lord and fail our Father in heaven, fail our Creator. We can do better. You can do better. Each one of us. I've done enough for him already. There's a popular one. I don't even know how that becomes a thought process that anyone could entertain when they take one look at the constant portrayal all over the place. Every corner has a cross, a crucifix, and a man suffering on it. A reminder. An unpleasant one. We have not done enough for him. Even before that time, he was fighting for us. As far back as humankind can remember and before that. She's a wonderful girl. She'd never cause me to disobey the Lord. That's been said. I think you all know the story. Something about a fruit, a snake, a garden. Might sound familiar. He's my man. I have to do what he says. I'd call that unevenly yoked. You are your own master. And by your choice, either the Lord is your master or he's not. If he's not, you won't be with him in his house. You won't be there. If you're lucky, you'll be relying on your own devices. And that is a miserable fate in itself. It will not be a paradise for you if you fail this. On the other hand, many of you suffer and strive and sacrifice, often with joy, to bring the kingdom of our Father to earth, to make true the Lord's Prayer in our actions. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Here's some more excuses for you. I'm afraid I'll be ridiculed. This one is quite often denied. And that's what's sad about most of these. Chances are, if you're someone who needs it, you're already in denial that you need it. You're already in denial that you're slipping. It's hard to say that to yourself. It's hard to admit, I'm screwing up. If it wasn't, you wouldn't need a sermon to tell you about it. 
to put these silly things we say to ourselves into words, spoken out loud. I'm overloaded with schoolwork right now. Schoolwork. Education is important. Knowledge, understanding, growth is important. But there is no piece of paper on this planet that will mean a thing in our Lord's kingdom. Grades won't get you there. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm too busy to do it. How old was Methuselah? A lot of young and old people serving the Lord. You see children putting forth a great example as witnesses. Setting the standard. Keep it up. And all of these excuses, all of these excuses lead to thoughts like, he's probably not really Christ anyway. And all of these things are just coincidences. I have to get on with my own life. And besides, even if I'm wrong, I'm a good person. I know God will forgive me. This is a lie people tell themselves to excuse themselves. Satan knows what and who you desire. He knows what holds you back, and he will use that to make you forget. Matthew 6.33 And while you're looking that up, I want to connect this to something in my own life, because when I first made Exodus, when I first left Babylon to come to serve the Lord's people and put my whole life to this, I had a dream. It was a very uh, hectic, chaotic time, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, because it was into the unknown with a lot of people I'd never really met or known before. A lot of challenges, a lot of uh, leaving my comfort zone. Then I had a dream, a very vivid one, and I don't often get these. I was back in Florida, and this massive, massive alligator came to me. I was standing on a little tiny patch of land in the middle of a river, barely enough room to stand, certainly not enough to move without entering the water. And this gator charged me, came straight for me from the water, and attempted to bite my leg. And all it did to save me was step aside. And his mouth was grazing the side of my leg, trying to clamp down, but there was nothing to clamp because I would not put my leg in his mouth. As this struggle was taking place, and as I'm turning the wheels in my mind, trying to figure out, all right, how can I defeat this creature so that I can live, so that I can rejoin the others? I heard it speak to me. It was a telepathic thought in this dream. And it said, I know exactly how much force it will take to snap your leg. This was Satan speaking. He knows exactly, exactly what it takes to break you. Every one of us. Do not underestimate your adversary. He is the best there is at what he does. This is no cartoon character. This is no Looney Tunes villain. Matthew 6.33 says, But first, be concerned about his kingdom and what has his approval. Then all these things will be provided for you. All these extraneous ideas, concepts, goals, things you hope to attain or experience, they'll come. Eternity is a long time, and trust me, whatever you've got going, it can wait. The Lord's priority is first. The kingdom is first. All else is extraneous. But if it is good and it is just, it will come to you. It will be added to you. As Lord Rael said in his address to the world on May 21st, 2011, 
What is most regrettable is the fact that you completely underestimate your adversary. Be wise. Do not fall. God bless you to have the wisdom to see this and to know what you need to do, what you need to amend, to move forward. Love you. Those within the Ecumenical Order of Christ are pleased and honored to provide everyone with the whole truth behind history, religion, and end time prophecies. Through our teachings and testimonies, each clergy member is dedicated to seeking out all matters and presenting the unadulterated evidences clearly with the divine guidance of the returned Christ, Lord Ra'el. We strive to be a light in this dark world, and you can too by helping spread these messages. Many of us have given up our comfortable lives in today's society, and we now live through the kindness and generosity of others in order to pursue the higher path of knowledge. If you wish to continue learning more truths and would like to help us continue our mission, you can do so by sending even a small donation to sanctuaryinterfaithisrael at gmail.com on PayPal. Check us out online at sanctuaryinterfaith.org, lordrayel.org, and armageddonbroadcastnetwork.tv. Don't forget to join us online at the International Congregation of Lord Rael on both Facebook and VK. Please be sure to check out all of the links in the description field. Remember to love God and each other. Thank you and God bless.